This is my version of the Skinner machine. Now, I don't know if it actually works or not because I haven't gotten to that stage where I can test it. But I can demonstrate it. It doesn't spin very fast. But one thing is certain that the input has to be irregular. Now Skinner's machine, and I'm going to do a separate video on this, the input actually oscillates back and forth. This thing's just getting stuck. These machines are low power, so you do need quite a lot of weight before you can tell whether they're working, and you need to load them. So this one's pretty simple, and its purpose was to have a simpler design. Skinner's design has two weights. This is one. So there's a bearing in here. Now that bearing was giving me trouble because it was popping out. And there's a U joint here. And this is adjustable. It just spins. So, the issue with these machines is actually how to do the input. Now, I, um, I did make some discoveries about that. Basically, David Query's method of rocking is the closest thing out there. But you do need this lever. Now I think Skinner may have had an additional link. This is a lot like Skinner's machine, except it's upside down. So anyway, there's that machine. It's certainly easier to get to run smoothly than uh, Skinner's machine, but with Skinner's machine there's a bottom weight here, so as this is, this wants to pull down, but the bottom weight pulls it up. So. Skinner's may be a better design, or this may be a better design, but there's only about 40 pounds on here, and you probably need about 100 or 200 pounds to really tell whether it's working. And this bearing, it needs two bearings, one to hold it stable and one to hold it from coming down, which is what the... Uh, 
that type of bearing is for. So it's pretty simple, except for the input, which Skinner's machine used links, tie rod ends. I'll do a video on that next.